All right, there's one more thing I want to do today, which is a lightning fast review of asymptotic notation. Okay, so this is how we formally discuss throwing away constant factors in lower order terms and focus on rate of growth. Okay, so the cast of care. big theta. Okay, there's some other sort of obscure cousins that we won't use in the class as well. So what does this mean? All right, and so definitely I'm assuming all of you have seen this before. You know, the rest of this lecture will work with the assumption that this is review. It's going to be fast. If you haven't seen it before, write down what I put on the board. That'll serve as a record for what you need to study hard later. Okay, and indeed, you know, as always at the beginning of the lecture, I put up reading. asymptotic notation, some related concepts. Uh, if you already know it, great, skip it. If you don't, you know, definitely catch up with that. I'm not going to emphasize, you know, this kind of stuff in lecture, but I promise you, guys, uh, is it working with asymptotic notation? They're there on homework number one. I promise you it'll be at least some of the points on the final exam. I do expect you to know it, even if it, even if it's sort of peripheral to the main lecture. All right. So, what is big O mean? Well, we're going to be discussing functions. So suppose T of n is a function defined on the natural numbers. And I know this is kind of abstract. I mean, you know, we almost always mean something specific when we do this. So usually we're talking about, you know, that 6n log n plus 6n. Usually we're talking about some running time bound we have on some algorithm. Okay? So that's usually what T of n means. So worst case running time of an algorithm. And I want to give you a few answers, a few ways to think about the issue of what does it mean for one function to be big O of another function. So when is T of n big O of f of n? All right, so T of n here is something like that 6n log n plus 6n. F of n is going to be some relatively simple function like just n log n. Okay? Well, let me give you the answer first in English, and then I'll give you a more precise version. So what it means in English for T of n to be bigger than F of n is it means that eventually... And by eventually, I mean for sufficiently big enough values of n. So remember, we're thinking about big problems. So for sufficiently large n, what should be true is that t of n is bounded above. So it's sort of like a less than or equal to idea. Is bounded above by a constant multiple of f of n. So that's what it means in English. Let me give you a cartoon. So picture. something like this, <laughs> and then you double f of n. Okay, so eventually, after a crossing point, what we see is that a constant multiple twice f of n is everywhere above t of n. Okay, so this is a cartoon picture of t of n being bigger of f of n. Let me give you a formal definition, and this is the one that I want you to use for proofs.
Okay, but really it's just encoding in mathematics what we've already said, which definition. So one function is big O of another. If and only if there exists constants call them C and N not positive such that T of N is bounded above by C times F of N for every N greater than or equal to N not. Okay, there's more symbols, but this is what we already said. What does it mean? It means that eventually, that's quantified by this n naught. Okay, so eventually, after n naught, for sufficiently large n, t of n is ever by a constant multiple of f. There's your constant multiple. Okay. So in the cartoon, this crossing point would be n naught, and this two would be the constant c. Say it again. If you have a large enough C, the line is always strong. Okay, so good question. Price. Okay, so what's uh, the eventual answer will be no. But I, I don't blame you if it's not clear why the answer is no right now. So let me talk a little bit more. So first of all, what do I mean by constants? C and N naught. What I mean is that C and N naught cannot be functions of N. Cannot depend on N. C could be a hundred, N naught could be a million, but then we're thinking about values of N which are just unboundedly large. Okay? So if you ever find yourself using big O notation with a proof and you say set C equal to something which has an N in it, it's an incorrect answer. Okay, I guarantee it. Okay, so that's something to watch out for, so for some troubleshooting. Um, and we'll see in a second. So now what we'll do next is give you both an example and a non-example. Okay, so we'll see a non-example where it's impossible to prove. You can just prove that one, there's no way to make one curve cross another one. So that'll answer the question in the back. Okay? A final way, you know, I've given you a lot of ways of thinking about this as a cartoon, um, the math. If you, want to, if you want to think of it more of sort of a competitive sense. You can imagine that you know, you're playing a game against an adversary and you want to win and the big O of F of N. Okay? Prove that this inequality holds and you have to go first and you, your strategy is you pick a constant multiple C and you pick a potential crossing point N naught. You go first. Then your adversary has to try to pick some large value of N to flip this inequality. Okay, so being big O of F of N means you have a winning strategy. You can find a suitable C, a suitable N naught. So no matter what your opponent does, they will never flip that inequality. But if it's not big O of F of N, what that means is you have no winning strategy. No matter what C and N naught you pick, the adversary will always be able to foil you with a suitable choice of N flipping that inequality. Okay, so those are all different ways to think about the notation. Let me give you some examples. <coughs> 